Hi guys, welcome back. I'm here to do a review on the Josie Marin, Moran, however you say it, um, Argan Daily Moisturizer SPF 47. So this is a tinted sunscreen, and as you can tell by the name, it is packed with argan oil, and if you read the ingredients, it is packed with lots of other oils. So, just gonna preface it and start out the gate. If you have oily skin, just turn this off. Sorry, it's not gonna work for you. I just really don't think you would like this. This is for dry skin. If you have normal skin, you could use it kind of as a makeup and maybe not so much an SPF because if you put too much on, you're gonna have an oil slick on your face. So let's just get that out of the way with it. <laughs> okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it on your, my face, not your face, my face, hopefully. If I put it on your face, that'd be weird. I'm gonna put it on my face. I'm gonna do what I do on a normal day on one side of my face with just the Josie Moran. On the other side of my face, I'm gonna be doubling it up with another physical or mineral, either way, sunscreen, just to show you that you can wear it two ways. Um, and I'm gonna talk you through all the pros and cons while I do that. There's a car out there. I'm in my bathroom, my unfinished bathroom. If you haven't watched any of my other videos, I'm renovating my house. And this bathroom has the best light, and it looks like this, but I don't care because I feel like the light is just so much better. So, let's just take a look at my face. This is without any moisturizer, any, any, anything on. Now, I will say that you don't really need to double up with a moisturizer if you're gonna be wearing this. It is packed with so many oils that it is serving as a moisturizer and a sunscreen, but definitely a moisturizer, so don't add extra moisturizer. I think you really would not like the look of it. But okay, so this is my face. My nose always is bright red in the winter, especially. Um, and I do have some discolorations, redness. Um, you can tell like just some dark spots and blemishes. And yeah, especially on my forehead. I've done pretty good, a pretty good job this summer or this past summer with wearing sunscreen, so I don't find that I had as much discoloration. Um, and that's one of the reasons this works for me. I don't need full coverage foundation, nor do I like it. I prefer just a tinted sunscreen pretty much always. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna put it on my face. That's all I look adorable, if I do say so myself. <laughs> okay, so guys, when you put on, although my ears stick out, that's okay. When you put on sunscreen, um, most of us probably don't apply enough. And especially when it's a tinted sunscreen, we're not applying enough. They recommend, I have a little, what is this, quarter teaspoon? People, you can read it lots of different places, but it's kind of between a quarter of a teaspoon to a half a teaspoon just for your face and neck. Um, I don't have a half, no wait, I don't have a third teaspoon. So I have a quarter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you and I'm gonna fill this up all the way and do a little bit like overload just so we get kind of in between the recommended dosages. Um, and already I'm like, holy shit, that was like six pumps and that's a level one. I don't think I'm gonna round it out because this is just ridiculous and I don't wanna waste all of it. Um, so yeah, that's a lot. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and start applying it to my face. Okay, so that is half of my face and I wanted to just show you kind of what you could do on an everyday basis. I feel like I went in with quite a bit, um, but let's look at the teaspoon. You wouldn't know that I used any. That's insane. If I poured this all out of my hand, I would be able to cover probably my whole like upper body. So we're not using enough. Um, I think that's clear. But also at the same time, I think if I were to use that whole quarter teaspoon, I would look ridiculous. It's just insane. Like look at how shiny this is already. And that was me being kind of like moderate with the amount that I used. That said, I think this is a beautiful, beautiful glow. And with the ingredients that are in this product, it's not going to set down. You're gonna have this glow. You're gonna have this glow for most of the day. That said, I do find that this sunscreen, it works really well. I don't get burnt through it. Um, I don't think I own any sunscreens that don't actually work. So that's a good thing. 
Um, and like most sunscreens, they say to reapply every two hours. That would be a lot for this one. I don't think I would do that. Um, it's just not gonna happen. Okay, so on the other side of my face, I'm going to be using the Super Zoop, Super Goop Zinc Screen. And this is again, 100% mineral sunscreen. So these are both mineral, these are both mineral or physical sunscreens. Just means that they are a physical barrier from the sun to your body. Whereas a chemical sunscreen gets absorbed by your body. For me, when I work out, I can't wear any of these because I sweat so much that it just sweats off. So I have to use a mineral or I have to use a chemical for working out. But for the rest of my life, I try to use some form or fashion of a mineral sunscreen. Okay, so this one is a really cool, um, you can use this every day, but I use it kind of as a base coat. And there's a lot of, I don't know, not necessarily controversy, but there are conflicting reports on should you mix sunscreens. For me, I've never been burnt mixing them. I'm not saying, I mean, sometimes I actually mix the two together, but other times I layer up which is what I'm gonna do now. Some people say you need to layer a chemical first and then a physical. I do two physical slash mineral sunscreens and it's fine. Um, again, if you really need to be sure, you should talk to your dermatologist or your doctor and you know make your own judgment call, but for me, it works just fine. Um, you don't want to necessarily rub too, too much though because you can kind of um, change the efficacy of the sunscreen so that's something to keep in mind now this sunscreen is tinted slightly and it's a lot um, it feels like it soaks in a lot more but it look how runny it is I don't remember it being that runny before let's see if I can shake it up so yeah it's definitely quite a bit runnier and whereas the the first one I used the Josie Marin it has a much darker tint and I don't think it'll work on people that have like light or fair skin. Um, I have kind of more olivey Mediterranean skin. And so it works for me, especially in the summer when I'm a bit tanner. But even in the winter, it just fits my undertones really well. I would say if you have light or fair skin, it's just not going to look good on you. It's going to be probably too orangish, reddish. For me, that works. Now this one, if you have light or fair skin, it actually has kind of a more... Um, peach kind of undertone um and so i think it would work but it's like a lot lighter than the other okay so this is the second half you can tell it doesn't have a white cast per se so some mineral sunscreens definitely do but it has that light peach tint but i do find that you can see it's just it just lightens my face a little which is why i put it on first and then i go over with the josie marin this said i wouldn't do this in the summer especially if you live in a hot or humid climate you'll just be like a glow glistening ball of sweat, even though it's not sweat, but that's what it'll look like. And if you have anything but dry skin, it's probably not gonna work. So this is what it looks like. And if you would like me to do a review on the super group, I'm happy to. That's not what this one is about. Okay, so we're gonna go back in with this quarter teaspoon that I barely touched and do the other side of my face. And sometimes I'll let this side sit a little, but mineral sunscreens don't really set down so much as um, like a chemical will be absorbed by your skin, of course. So this one, you may not, you can wait, but it's not maybe gonna do that much. You can go around your eyes. You don't have to worry about some of like the, the chemical sunscreens burning. Um, mineral sunscreens, Definitely won't burn your eyes. Okay, I have to use a little bit that I have left over just on the other side of my face. And I would definitely recommend going down your neck. Okay guys, so all I did was put on a little mascara. Okay, so there we have it. And you definitely see this glow that I have. And this glow is actually gonna last pretty much as long as it's on. It is packed with oils, argan oil, I think, um, apricot seed oil. Let me look on the bottle. I've been using the Glossier Lash Lick. 
and I just find that it gives you the most natural but like extended lashes. I think it's beautiful. Anyway, that's not what I'm talking about. So I wanted to go through some of the pros and cons with this um, Argan tinted SPF. So let's start out with the benefits. I think it is just the most luminous, like dewy to the max sunscreen moisturizer. One of the best things about it is that you are actually moisturizing your face when using this. It has argan oil, jojoba oil, um, aloe juice, aloe vera juice oil. Wait, I guess it's just aloe vera juice. Um, and some other stuff as well. So you're getting the benefits of skincare plus SPF, which I think is a win-win. Um, it also somehow has this ability to kind of like blur your skin a little bit. I wore this the other day and my mom was like, what do you have on your face? Like it just kind of brings attention to your face in, in a good way. It also has this proprietary blend of kind of ingredients called the Sunboost ATB. Sunboost ATB, and I'm just gonna read this from the website. This is from Kobo. The current trend towards increasing SPF values in sunscreens presents a challenge to formulators who have to create products with high concentration of sunscreen agents while keeping acceptable cosmetic qualities. So Kobo has developed Sunboost ATB, a mixture of antioxidant, anti-irritant, and anti-inflammatory agents with a protect at a proprietary ratio. When used in sunscreens in combination with organic and or inorganic UV filters, Sunboost ATB shows an increase in SPF and PFA scores by more than 30%. So I think what it's saying is that you don't have to increase the ratios of your zinc oxide and titanium dioxide, which means that you don't have as much of a white cast, but you're still getting the sunscreen SPF properties. So to me, that is definitely a good thing, but at the same time, since it's a proprietary ratio, we don't know what's in it really, um, and the percentages. So you definitely want to just kind of keep in mind, keep that in mind. And if you are interested or kind of curious or skeptical, do more research on it. I think that's the best thing. Like never just take my word or another YouTuber or anyone's word, just do your own research. The other thing that I thought was cool about this is you really can kind of mix it with something that maybe if this doesn't suit your skin tone, if it's too dark, too red, too orangish, I would suggest mixing it with something that has more of a white cast. But just keep in mind that when you do mix two sunscreens, that you're not going to be getting, say, like the 47 SPF from this one if the other sunscreen is only a 30. You're only going to get the lowest amount. So mix your sunscreens appropriately and just kind of, there's so much conflicting information out there about mixing them. Now, this is, like I said before, and I've mentioned numerous times, this is only for dry skin. Normal to dry may, like I have normal to dry, and I find that it really is glowy to the max, and I'm okay with that, but if you're not, just keep that in mind. Um, some negatives about this. So I don't think it mixes that well with makeup. Uh, you can wear it underneath, but you're going to, it's probably going to move around a bit too much. And I would say that your, your makeup, your foundation, whatever, it's not gonna set as well as you might want it to. That's another thing, it doesn't set. I could powder this and um, it, it would maybe reduce the shine a bit, but it's not gonna set in a way that you might want. Like if I touch, my, if I go like this, it's gonna move around and then it's gonna be gone. Sometimes my hair, especially when my hair is down, I find like it's my hair sticks to my face. That's kind of obnoxious, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there is a scent to it. There, It says perfume is added, but it does say that the um, perfume is naturally derived, which would lead me to believe that it's essential oils, but I did not see what exactly they were. It just says parfum on the ingredient list, which is frustrating because you don't know if you have a allergy to a certain, you don't know what it is, and that's really a huge problem for me. Like I said, it's not for normal or oily skin, just, just no, just, I mean, really, you would probably be miserable. Uh, it does transfer quite a bit, and you can't get it to set down. The other thing is that I would not suggest this with pale skin. As you saw in the swatch on my hand, it really does have quite of a bit of a tint, more so than some of the others. I reviewed the Drunk Elephant on Retent, I will post that above. And that one has a tint for sure, it's tinted, but not like this level. This works for me, like I said, because I have the same kind of skin tone and undertones, but for people with really fair or light skin, it probably won't. The last thing that I just found really odd and frustrating 
is the ingredient list. The ingredient list on my bottle, I don't know where it is, is not the same as the ingredient list on the website. I find that to be just unacceptable. And when I asked them, I like sent them a message. They gave me like a bullshit answer that I didn't quench my thirst in any any degree. Um, so I know I am a formulator or I'm learning how to formulate stuff myself. So I do understand the importance of ingredient lists and them being accurate. And for them to have such different, wildly different ones. Maybe I have like an older formulation, but I bought it maybe three or four months ago. So how can, <laughs> it's just frustrating. You know, like I expect that to be up to date on something that's $36 sold at Sephora, high-end brand. So that said, I wouldn't, I, I do wear this a lot, which is odd because I wouldn't give it the highest rating. I would probably give it like two and a half, three out of five stars. Um, and that's just because there's so many things that won't work for so many people. I think this works for a very small, I, I think this works for such a small swath of people that it's just, it's probably not gonna work for the majority. So I have a hard time giving it a higher kind of review and ranking. But if you're in the camp like me, it works. So I hope this helps. Let me know how you, what you think about it. Oh, stick into my face already. And yeah, I will see you in my next video. Bye guys. Oh, and P.S. I still have this much left. Maybe I'll go slather it on my boyfriend.